thank you for taking the time to find out a little more about your new Range Rover. A brand new architecture underpins every aspect of this luxury SUV. From its unmatched capability and agile handling to its peerless refinement. Range Rover's evolution is epitomized by its reductive, modernist design, seamlessly integrating the latest technology. This video is arranged in chapters, so you can skip to items of interest and rewatch procedures if necessary. New Range Rover has several completely new features, including a brand new infotainment system, so even our past owners will find some things unfamiliar. New Range Rover is the most connected car we've ever produced, giving you remote control of climate and air purification and providing security alerts. Amazon Alexa enables you to control your household lights and heating, while software over the air updates automatically ensure maps are always current. To get the most out of Range Rover's capabilities, you will need to download the relevant apps and set up accounts. The first thing I would recommend is to download the Land Rover iGuide app. This contains not only a full searchable copy of the handbook, but also a frequently asked question section. There is also a visual tour around the inside and outside of the car with information on the controls, buttons and features. It's a great source of immediate information when a question pops into your head or you just wonder, what does that button do? The Land Rover Remote app is another must-have and your retailer should have spoken to you about the setup of your in-control account that enables many of the intelligent features. When you first run the app, there is a quick start guide to aid setup of the car. It provides control of remote locking and unlocking, tells you how much fuel is in the tank and reports the last part location so you can always find it. The app also facilitates remote activation of the climate system, cooling the interior in the summer or warming and de-icing the car in the winter before you get in but whilst keeping the car fully secure. It can also export a full journey log in the form of an Excel spreadsheet so it is easy to track business mileage. New Range Rover has a Land Rover in control secure pro vehicle tracker fitted which is Thatcham's Maximum 7 categorization. And your retailer will have performed the first steps in the setup process. You should have received an in-control email inviting you to activate the tracker. If you haven't seen it, it's worth checking your junk folder before contacting your retailer. The activation process takes less than two minutes. Once complete, you can view the certificate from within the in-control portal. If your insurer wishes to see proof of an activated tracker, simply go to the Your In Control Services section and select the option to download. OK, let's start with the smart key. Lock and unlock seem pretty obvious and the door handles and mirrors will respond to each. Pressing the lock button just once will lock the car. Pressing twice will double lock with a beep to confirm. This means that the car cannot be unlocked from the inside, so even if someone smashes a window, they still can't open the doors. This is a really important step in securing your car, and we recommend you double lock every time. Holding the unlock button for three seconds will operate global opening, lowering all windows to allow air into the car before you enter on a hot day. Similarly, if you get out and then realize that you have left a window open, hold the lock button to activate global closing to raise all windows and secure the car. These operations can be enabled or disabled by going to Settings, All, Vehicle, Convenience, and then Windows. New Range Rover is fitted with keyless entry and as the vehicle now has deployable door handles it includes proximity sensors for approach unlock and walkaway locking. The smart key 
automatically unlocks the doors and deploys the handles on the side of the vehicle as you approach. And walk away locking will lock the vehicle once you are 1.5 meters away. If you are exiting the vehicle and don't want walk away locking to engage, if you are unloading an item for example, simply press the button on the door handle. This technology can be disengaged by going to Settings, All, Vehicle, Safety and Security, and then selecting options for approach unlocking and walk away locking. You can always unlock or lock the vehicle by either pressing the button on the door handle or using the key. To double lock the vehicle, press once and then press once again, not too fast, and you will hear a beep to confirm. With two-stage unlocking enabled, one press will unlock the driver's door only and another press will unlock all doors. This can also be disengaged by going to Settings, All, Vehicle and Safety and Security. Next, there is a button to unlock and open just the tailgate. Do make sure that there is space for it to do so safely. You can also operate the tailgate by the button above the number plate on the outside, a button by the driver's knee inside, and a button on the back of the tailgate itself. Additionally, if you have the key in your pocket, the tailgate can be activated hands-free. Stand to the side and give a kick and return motion with your foot under the rear corner of the car to open or close the tailgate. This function can be enabled and disabled in settings, all, vehicle, power tailgate. Next, there is a handy button to trigger the lights. So if you are approaching the car in the dark or simply trying to find it in a dark car park, this will switch the lights on. By default, they will stay on for 30 seconds. This can be extended up to four minutes using settings, all, vehicle, convenience, and then exterior lighting. Unlocking the car will also trigger the headlights, including a short animation welcome sequence, and they will remain on for a short period after locking to provide light to see you to your door. The final button is a panic alarm. Press for three seconds, or press three times in three seconds and the horn will sound and the hazard lights will flash. After five seconds, this can be canceled by holding the button for a further three seconds. The split tailgate provides a load bearing shelf capable of taking the weight of two people, which can be folded separately and redeployed using the control on the lower tailgate. It will fold up automatically when the powered tailgate closes. If you wish to adjust the height the tailgate opens to, for example, you have a garage with a low ceiling, reposition the tailgate to the desired height. Hold the button on the tailgate until you hear a beep, and this will store that height to memory. Alternatively, you can head into settings and select all, vehicle, power tailgate, and select an opening height from the menu. Inside the load space, there is a collection of buttons mounted on the right-hand side. These will vary depending on the features fitted to your car. The top buttons extend or fold the auto-folding load space cover if it is fitted. There is also a button to set it for automatic operation. Second and third row seats can be folded or raised using the switches below. But there is a shortcut button to fold them all down at once. On five seat variants, this button will drop the ski hatch. The deployable tow bar can also be operated from the buttons in the load space. The button next to that illuminates each light separately in a time sequence, enabling one person to check all the lights on a trailer. The tow bar app on the main touchscreen can even report the nose weight of the trailer. This feature is available for 60 minutes after deploying the tow bar. Check iGuide or the handbook for details of tow assist features that can help with the manoeuvring and stability of your trailer. 
the lower two buttons can raise and lower the rear suspension to make hooking up a trailer or loading the vehicle easier. This function can also be operated remotely from the key. With the engine running and hazard lights activated, close the doors and press the headlight and tailgate buttons simultaneously to lower the suspension. Headlights and unlock to raise the suspension and headlights and lock to set the vehicle to normal height. Getting into the car, the first thing you need to do is find a comfortable position. The vertical control on the door will change the recline of the seat and adjust headrest height, while the horizontal bar controls backwards and forwards movement. Pulling both ends up and down will raise and lower the seat, whilst twisting it will affect the seat tilt. Once you start altering the seating position, the touch screen will display an alert. Tap this and you will see a diagram allowing adjustment of lumbar, bolsters, upper seat and headrests, and seat squab length. The steering column can be adjusted for reach and rake using the joystick on the right hand side of the column. To make it easier to get in and out, the steering wheel can be set to automatically move up and out of the way when the driver's door is opened. Just twist the joystick anti-clockwise into the auto position. Door mirror controls are mounted at the front of the driver's door. Select which side you wish to adjust and then use the joystick to refine your view. There is a control to fold both mirrors in for when you need to squeeze through any tight gaps. The window lock button will deactivate control of the windows from the rear seats, as well as all other rear door mounted controls and enable child locks on the rear doors. The final button on this panel drops the car access height and, if it is dark, activates the manoeuvring light in the door mirrors. This is useful if you are stopping to pick up a passenger so they can get in more easily and see the ground outside the door. Once you are happy with your driving position, you can store it to memory. So if you share the car with another driver, you can seamlessly switch between customized setups. Press the M button on the seat controls, followed within five seconds by the number you would like to save to. To recall your position, simply press that number and the seats and mirrors will return to your saved positions. Whilst the door mirror positions can be saved, the rear view mirror still needs manual adjustment each time. However, the clear sight rear view mirror goes some way to addressing this. If fitted, Simply pull the tab on the bottom of the mirror towards you to activate the image from the camera in the rooftop antenna. Because it is not showing a reflection, it does not require precise positioning. And of course, it offers a perfect wide angle view even if you have tall passengers or have loaded bags up to the roof. The brightness of the image can be altered using the buttons to the right on the bottom of the mirror. There is an array of controls on the steering wheel. On the right are the controls for the adaptive cruise control. Push the rocker switch up whilst traveling at your preferred speed and the car will automatically maintain that speed until you touch the brakes or press cancel. Pressing the accelerator will cause the car to speed up, but when you release, it will return to the set speed. Pushing the rocker switch up or down will increase or reduce the set speed. If the radar detects a vehicle in front is traveling slower than you, Range Rover will automatically match their speed and maintain a safe distance. If cruise control has been canceled, pressing the rocker switch in to resume will return the car to the last set speed. The arrow buttons to the right of the rocker will increase or decrease the distance between you and the car in front. Whilst you need to be traveling over 20 miles per hour to activate cruise control, adaptive cruise will match the speed of the car in front all the way down to zero. If the traffic restarts within a few seconds, the vehicle will pull away with the traffic. Any longer than that, and you will need to give the car permission to go with a gentle press on the accelerator or by pressing the rocker switch in 
to resume. This function means that adaptive cruise control can be used in tiring stop-start traffic situations. Adaptive cruise control can also be set to issue a prompt or automatically change speed in response to changing speed limits. All adaptive cruise control preferences can be set in settings, all, vehicle, driver assistance, cruise and speed assistance. If you wish to deactivate the radar and use the system to simply maintain a set speed, press and hold the gap reduce button until the white cruise control icon is displayed in the driver display. Whilst using adaptive cruise control, you can activate steering assist, which provides subtle steering inputs to keep the car in the centre of the lane and follows gentle curves in the road. This feature toggles on and off with the button above the rocker switch. Whilst not using adaptive cruise control, this feature operates as lane keep assist, providing torque steer if it detects the car is crossing the lane boundaries without indicating for a lane change. Both systems require the driver to keep their hands on the steering wheel and signal when changing lanes. The LIM button switches the function between cruise control and speed limiter. Speed limiter will prevent Range Rover from exceeding the set speed, although it can be overridden by a heavy throttle input. To link the speed limiter to changing speed limits, press and hold the CAN button until the green adaptive speed limiter icon appears in the driver display. The final button on the right hand side toggles the heated steering wheel on and off. On the left hand side, the button in the middle of the arrows accesses menu options for the instrument panel. This includes media, trip records, virtual driver's display layout and head-up display if fitted. The arrows allow you to navigate through these menus, up and down to scroll through the menu, right to select a sub-menu and left to take you back a step. Select options by pressing the center button. The driver's display can be set for twin dials, full screen map view or a focused display. Once you have selected a layout, each info panel can be customised to the driver's preference. A popular option is to use the twin dials with the navigation map on the centre info panel. It is important to set the display height for the head-up display for each driver. This position is saved if you use the seat memory settings. The head-up display can be set to show not just the current speed, but also navigation instructions, the current speed limit, adaptive cruise control status and other useful information. The aim is to allow you to keep your eyes on the road as much as possible. The phone icon will answer an incoming call, press and hold to end a current call. The thumb wheel will increase or decrease the volume. When listening to music, the left and right arrows can be used to skip through tracks or radio stations. Again, the thumb wheel controls the volume. The voice button primes the system to listen for voice commands. Just wait for the chime and then tune radio to BBC Radio 2. Alternatively, you can use a wake-up phrase. Initially, this is set to, hey Land Rover, but you can also set a name of your choice. For example, Hey Sophie. The system uses natural language understanding. So commands could be, Hey Land Rover, call David's mobile. Or, Hey Land Rover, take me to Buckingham Palace. You'll need to enable the wake up phrase via the settings menu on the touch screen. In the app section under voice. There are also options to disable the system's verbal confirmations and a tutorial detailing the full capabilities of the voice system. The diamond button can be customised to control a range of navigation, phone or media features. These can also be found in the app section of the vehicle settings under the heading Favourite Steering Wheel Switches. Most people will want to leave their windscreen wipers set to auto. Move the stalk to its lowest position and then come up one notch. 
sensitivity can be adjusted using the rotating collar. Pull forward for screen wash. The outer collar operates the rear wiper and the button on the end controls the rear screen wash. Similarly, the headlights are best set to auto by rotating the outer collar on the left stalk. Pulling the stalk towards you will flash the main beam. When driving at night, pushing the stalk away from you will toggle the main beam on and off. As standard, Range Rover features pixel LED lights, which track up to four objects, creating cones of shadow around them to minimize dazzling, but maintaining full beam everywhere else. If more objects are detected, the system will drop back down to dipped lights. This mode operates above 25 miles per hour and requires the lighting control to be set to auto. Some cars have digital projection LED lights, which have higher resolution and can track up to 16 objects before having to dip. So they can be used at full beam, even on busy dual carriageways and motorways. Settings for headlights can be accessed at settings, all, vehicle, exterior lights. Starting the car is as simple as putting your foot on the brake pedal and pushing the start button. So long as the smart key is in the car, the engine will start. When you first switch the car on, the main touchscreen will greet you and at the bottom of the screen, there is an option to set up your vehicle and the infotainment system named PIVI. We highly recommend you click on this as the system will walk you through a few key steps to streamline the setup process. This will lead you to select your choice of language. From here, you will be prompted to add a name for your personal profile and choose a graphic for that profile, followed by your in-control account details. Each authorised user of the vehicle can have their own profile linked to their own in-control account. When you have done this, you will need to enable connectivity, switch on mobile data and agree to the terms and conditions. Once complete, return to the sign-in screen by pressing the X at the bottom right of the screen. Tap the sign-in button and when complete, you will be given the option to set a four-digit passcode to secure your data followed by the option to remember this passcode, which will automatically sign you in whenever you start the vehicle. PIVI will then prompt you to pair a phone. On your phone, simply go to Settings and then Bluetooth, search for a new device, select Range Rover, and then confirm pairing on both your phone and the PIVI screen. You can then pair additional phones to the system or continue. You can always add more phones later. PIVI allows two phones to be connected simultaneously, for example work and personal phones. When either phone rings, you can answer the call via the vehicle's touchscreen or steering wheel button. For making calls, you can switch between phones directly from PIVI's home screen. Finally, PIVI will prompt you to select your favourite radio stations. Following a short animation showing a few tips of how to navigate PIVI, the main homepage will appear. The setup wizard will be offered on the greeting screen each time you start the vehicle. Multiple drivers and profiles can be added and PIVI will remember each driver's preferences to deliver a personal experience. It can also analyze behavior to pre-select navigation routes and destinations based on your regular routine. PIVI's home screen has been designed to allow direct access to the features and information you use most. By default, this offers direct access to media, telephone and navigation and the most common features associated with each. PIVI offers a consistent logical interface. There is the clock and connectivity details and below that shortcuts for the standard surround cameras and settings. You can switch between driver profiles, jump straight to navigation, phone or media from virtually anywhere in the system. You can also access vehicle settings such as auto brake hold or launch one of the additional apps available. Pressing the cog icon will take you into settings 
where you can find options for connectivity, languages, and many vehicle safety features. It's worth looking through these to understand the full range of customization available. Quick settings allow you to choose a dark or light display theme and adjust screen brightness. The next tab is context sensitive, presenting options for the application you just jumped here from. For example, if you press the settings icon whilst in the navigation app, it will display settings relevant to navigation. Or if you're coming from the home screen, it gives you options for the home screen layout. Selecting all takes you into the settings menu, showing options for driver profiles, connectivity, which includes Bluetooth, mobile data, Wi-Fi connection, and settings for CarPlay and Android Auto. Vehicle, which displays the next anticipated service date and allows configuration of driver assistance features like lane keeping and parking aids. Safety and security, which includes collision avoidance systems and exterior light settings. Power tailgate settings for opening height and hands-free operation. Convenience, which controls the global opening and closing of the windows and vehicle access settings. Cabin lighting allows customization of ambient lighting and units lets you set preferences for miles or kilometers. General settings include preferences for voice controls and system-wide data. You may wish to explore these menus. Back to the home screen, the standard three tiles can be customized with other features and functions. These can be added to the home screen by swiping right and selecting the edit icon. Then tap the desired tile from the bottom row to move it to the top, reordering them to your preference. When you return to the home screen, you can swipe through all of the tiles. Many tiles show live information, like the name of the radio station or song you're listening to. The 4x4 information tile incorporates a variety of useful information, such as power distribution to each of the wheels. Let's look at the main three tiles. The phone tile shows which of the connected phones is currently active for outgoing calls. Below, you can access recent calls or favorites, as well as the ability to switch between connected phones. Wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are both standard on new Range Rover and can connect either with a USB cable or via Bluetooth. You may also need to switch the service on for your device by going to Settings, All, Connectivity, and then either Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. This allows the control of compatible phone apps via the main screen. Most music and podcast apps are supported, as well as streaming services like BBC Sounds, Spotify and Scala Radio. Connecting your phone in this way also allows voice access to your phone assistant using a long press on the steering wheel button. The next tile to look at is media. The home screen shows what is playing, along with buttons for source, pause or mute, and favorite radio stations. Favorites can contain DAB, FM, and AM base stations. Choosing radio and tapping on the media tile launches the media play screen, providing access to the full station list. Tapping stars will add them to your favorites. Choosing a phone as a source will show artwork if available, and Browse will allow access to the full range of songs, artists, and albums available on the phone. And again, many selections can be made using the voice control system. The last of the main three tiles to examine is navigation. With no destination set, the home screen provides shortcuts to set home as your destination, search, and direct access to your recent destinations. Just click on a destination from the list and the route will be calculated. Pressing search takes you to the full screen navigation view where you can click on a search category. Selecting one of these will display nearby options and give access to ratings and reviews if available. Parking options will even show the hourly rate for the car park. Whichever way a destination is chosen, just clicking on go will calculate the route 
according to your preferences in navigation settings. If you prefer, you can click on routes to choose between the fastest, shortest and the most economical route options. Instead of searching by category, you can input a search term wherever you see the search box. This can be a place name, place type, for example Italian restaurants or a postcode. As mentioned earlier, destinations can be easily set by voice using the Hey Land Rover wake up command. As well as appearing on the main touchscreen, navigation instructions will also be shown on the interactive driver display. With the destination set, the home screen's navigation tile options change to cancel guidance, mute or unmute voice instructions and access to en route information. Tapping on this displays traffic information, rest stops available and for PHEV models will show charging stations along the route. Simply click on a destination from the list for it to be added to your route as a waypoint. Pivi Pro learns your regular journeys. On startup, the navigation tile will display up to three predicted destinations, each with an estimated time of arrival, taking into account your usual driving style and current traffic conditions. If you sometimes drive to the same destination using different routes, it will also identify which route is the fastest based on current traffic conditions. For frequently used routes, the system displays the route but doesn't provide turn-by-turn -turn voice instructions. If the live traffic system alters the route to unfamiliar roads, the system will automatically enable voice guidance. On returning to familiar roads, the system will automatically mute voice guidance once again. Range Rover is equipped with a 4G data connection, providing software over-the-air updates, keeping maps up to date and allowing additional new features over time. When an update is available, it will alert the driver via the menu touchscreen and ask for permission to update when you complete your journey. Some updates may require the vehicle to be switched off and locked whilst the update is carried out. For convenience, these updates can be scheduled for a suitable time within a two-week period. The data connection also enables a variety of connected navigation features such as real-time traffic information, parking availability, as well as monthly navigation map updates. It also enables the online pack, which allows synchronization and streaming from various online accounts, including Spotify, Deezer and TuneIn, and Google or Microsoft calendars. You can also view weather at your destination and even pay for parking from the vehicle's touchscreen using your chosen parking app. To set this up, go to the app launcher, select connect accounts, and then select the type of account you wish to connect. You will then be given the option of an emailed link or a QR code. Simply scan this with a phone that has these accounts already added and Pivi will do the rest. Once added, Spotify, Deezer and TuneIn will show up as additional media sources alongside your phone and radio bands. There's no need for additional mobile data contracts or SIM cards. If there is an active subscription, mobile data is included via a built-in SIM card. Connected navigation and remote access to your vehicle via the remote app include a 12-month subscription. Along with the online pack, which includes Spotify and Amazon Alexa where available. On renewal of a subscription, the associated data plan required is also renewed. Back to the home screen. The camera icon reveals the 3D surround camera views that can simulate an overhead view as well as a full 360 degree surround view from outside the vehicle. Each of the camera icons present a different view allowing you to switch between different virtual camera positions. Front and rear cameras can be selected in ultra wide view so when pulling out of a blind junction or reversing out of a tight parking space you have enhanced vision left and right. The off-road option can even simulate a view under the bonnet using clear sight ground view. 
on a steep slope, when all you can see out of the windscreen is sky, it's reassuring to see where your wheels are placed on the track. Pressing the icon for driver controls brings up a screen with three tabs. Drive contains options for turning off stability control, the auto start-stop system, and also brake hold assist settings. Ride height accesses controls for the air suspension, so you can select access, normal, or off-road height. Access height lowers the vehicle by 50 millimeters to make it easier to get in and out. When you drive above 25 miles per hour, Range Rover will automatically raise back up to the normal drive height. The vehicle can be locked in access height by making the selection and then pressing the lock icon. Range Rover can be set to automatically lower to access height when you come to a stop. Just navigate to settings, all, vehicle and convenience where you will see options for auto access height. Off-road height 1 raises 40mm above normal height and operates up to 50 miles per hour. Useful for surfaces like deep sand where you want to maintain speed. Off-road height 2 raises the vehicle 75mm above normal drive height for maximum ground clearance at speeds below 30 miles per hour. The auto soft key toggles between manual and automatic selection of which off-road height to use. If Range Rover detects that it has been grounded or is wading in deep water, the touchscreen will display options to deploy extended mode, raising the suspension to maximum settings to return control. This severely limits the movement of the suspension and the car should be returned to regular off-road height as soon as conditions allow. The rear suspension height can also be controlled using the switches in the load space which can make loading the vehicle or hitching a trailer easier and can also be controlled remotely using the smart key. Here in the rear, there are controls on the door to adjust seat positions and these can be saved just like the ones in the front by pressing M and then a memory number. Just press the number to recall the safe position. Soft buttons on the door allow rear passengers to mute the stereo, control the panoramic roof blind, operate interior lighting and, if fitted, control the side window sun blinds. Use the arrow button to select which sun blind you wish to control. And then, with the window closed, pull the electric window switch up and release to raise the sun blind. Push the switch down and release to lower the sun blind. If required, this whole panel can be deactivated with the window lock button on the driver's door. Rear heated seats can be operated with the buttons found on the rear of the centre console. LED lights indicate the level of heating. Press repeatedly to reduce and switch off the heated seats. Cars with executive class rear seating have a deployable armrest in the centre, operated with a button below the centre headrest. This incorporates a touchscreen which offers control of the heated and cooled seats, the panoramic roof blind, the colour of the ambient lighting in the car and the deployable cup holder. It is also possible to move the passenger seat fully forward to maximise space behind. To stow the armrest away, press the button at the lower right hand side of the screen. If your Range Rover has seven seats, access to the third row is gained by pressing buttons just inside the rear doors. Press the down arrow to slide and tilt the second row seat forwards. Press and hold the up arrow to move the second row seat back into position. The third row seats can be raised or folded with the rocker switches just inside the rear doors or the switches in the load space. When they are in place, just flip up the headrests. They will drop automatically when the seats fold. Additionally, all seats can be controlled from the main touchscreen at the front of the cabin. Once in the third row, passengers have their own cup holders, USB points and lighting. If items are dropped and need to be retrieved, the third row seat cushions can be lifted up by just pulling the front of the cushion. 
In an emergency, the center second row seat can be dropped manually by using the strap on either the front or rear of the second row seat. Below the main touchscreen, you will find the climate controls. The left and right dials give temperature control for driver and passenger. These can be locked together by pressing sync. Pressing these dials in will toggle function to control the seat temperature. Pulling the dials out will give control of the fan speed. Tap auto to put this back under control of the climate system. There are also buttons here for heated front and rear windscreens and air recirculation. A dedicated air quality tile on the touchscreens show how CO2 levels are being managed. If you have Cabin Air Purification Pro, this screen will give the option to run a purify cycle, flooding the cabin with charged ions to neutralize odors, bacteria, allergens, and even viral particles in the air. This function can also be triggered remotely from the remote app. The front storage area in the center console incorporates a non-slip platform that can provide wireless phone charging if supported by your phone. Perfect, now that Apple CarPlay and Android Auto can connect wirelessly. Once the engine is on, the 15 watt charging pad can not only charge your phone, but will also improve your phone signal through the latest cellular boosting technology. Take care not to put any other metal objects on the pad, as this can disrupt charging. A USB-C port is provided here as well. Further back, there is a panel that slides open to reveal the front cup holders. These in turn can slide back to reveal a deep storage area and further USB ports. And then the center armrest lifts up to give access to the stowage compartment. If the refrigerator is specified, there will be a button here to toggle through cooling functions for this storage area. Range Rover uses a new palm shift gear selector Press the brake, squeeze the trigger with your fingers and nudge it towards you for drive or away for reverse. Whilst driving forward, nudging the selector towards you again will put the Range Rover in sport mode. This will alter the operation of the automatic gearbox, holding on to gears for longer to give more dynamic performance. Nudge the selector towards you again to return to normal drive mode. You can manually shift gears up and down using the paddles either side of the steering wheel. In drive mode, the system will revert to auto operation after about 10 seconds. But in sport mode, you will remain in manual control of the gears. To return the car to automatic operation, hold the right paddle towards you for about a second. The paddles can be configured so that they are only active in sport mode by going to Settings All and then vehicle and convenience. When you come to a stop, pressing the P button or switching off the ignition will automatically return it to park. The electronic park brake will disengage automatically when you drive away and re-engage when you come to a stop and open the driver's door. Pressing and turning the terrain response dial selects different driving modes. The car will alter throttle response, traction control and differential setting to deliver the best control and grip on a variety of surfaces. Range Rover now features a new wading mode. If you are going through deep water, we recommend selecting Wade Sensing from the 4x4 information tile for a continuous report on the depth of the water so you know how close you are to the 900mm limit. Pressing the dial down flush with the console Activate Auto Terrain Response. With the car using sensor data to determine and automatically engage the most appropriate drive mode. The low range gearbox control is found below the terrain response dial. To engage low range, you must be stationary with the drive selector in neutral. The selection will be confirmed with a green low range icon on the driver display. Repeat the procedure to change back into high range. If necessary, you can shift from low range to high range while traveling at speeds of less than 37 miles per hour. 
hill descent control restricts the vehicle's speed to a set limit whilst travelling downhill. With Range Rover independently braking all four wheels to stop you picking up speed and keeping you in control. This isn't just for off-road use. It can really help when travelling downhill on snow and ice, keeping your speed down without putting you into a slide. Pressing the button once enables hill descent control. Set a maximum speed using the cruise control rocker switch. You will see a pointer on the speedometer dial to indicate the set speed and you can adjust this up and down. As you come down an incline, Range Rover will automatically keep the speed down without braking input required from the driver. Pressing the button a second time engages all-terrain progress control, which will attempt to maintain the set speed when traveling uphill or over low friction surfaces. On a downhill slope, it will automatically function like hill descent control. Again, this isn't just for off-road driving. It might just be the thing that gets you off the wet field or up an icy slope, as it makes use of every bit of traction available without spinning the wheels. When driving, be aware that a start-stop system is standard so the engine will cut out when you come to a stop, instantly restarting as you press the accelerator. This can be overridden in the driver control screen, but does improve efficiency and helps reduce air pollution. All cars are fitted with exhaust filters. Occasionally, the car may display a drive to clear message. This is most common on diesel vehicles, which have been used for predominantly short, low speed journeys. This can be reset by a journey at motorway speeds. For petrols, it happens when they have been used under load, like towing. Find occasions to lift off the throttle and slow using engine braking to clear the filter. Automatic braking systems for city driving are standard and detects other traffic, pedestrians and cyclists, preventing collision or mitigating damage. A high-speed emergency braking system uses the adaptive cruise control radar to provide assistance at higher speeds. The door mirrors incorporate a blind spot warning system, lighting up when a vehicle is traveling alongside and flashing rapidly to warn if a car is closing to overtake. If you start to move into the path of an adjacent vehicle, the car will deliver a torque steer in an attempt to avoid a collision. These driver aids are designed to intervene when there is no input from the driver which is surprisingly hard to simulate. So please don't try to test these systems. Any input from the driver will override them and they do not reduce the driver's responsibility to drive safely and attentively. They can be deactivated, but as all of them have been shown to save lives, they are switched on by default. For additional safety, in the event of an accident where the airbags are deployed or the fuel safety cutoff is activated, the car will automatically contact emergency services sending GPS location data. Emergency services can be contacted at any time by pressing the right-hand button above the rear view mirror. The left-hand button summons breakdown assistance. Both these buttons have covers to avoid accidental operation. When refueling, simply press the fuel filler cap. So long as the car is unlocked, it will open. A smart mechanism will prevent filling with the wrong fuel. Diesel vehicles will occasionally need topping up with diesel exhaust fluid, also known as AdBlue. Advanced warnings will flash up on the information display to let you know when you are running low. However, if it runs out, as a legal requirement, the engine will not start. The top-up spout is next to the fuel filler spout. Any Land Rover retailer will be able to do this for you, or full instructions can be found in the iGuide app. There are a number of controls and displays that are exclusive to the plug-in hybrid variants of new Range Rover. The EV button on the centre console toggles between different drive modes. Most of the time, this will be best set to hybrid to allow the car to automatically use petrol or electric propulsion depending on driving conditions and driver demand. This mode also allows the car to use predictive energy optimization. 
If a route is set in the navigation, Range Rover can prioritise use of electric power in urban areas and ensure maximum efficiency across the whole journey. EV mode will manually switch the car to use electric power and inhibit the use of the petrol engine. You might want to select this mode when driving through cities or low emission zones. Even at motorway speeds, Range Rover can easily operate on electric power only, although this will decrease the electric range available. The save function will force the car to use the petrol engine. As well as conserving the battery charge, this also allows Range Rover to recuperate charge whilst driving. Selecting the apps view on the touchscreen and choosing EV reveals a dedicated electric vehicle status display, showing current charge and range. Swiping to the side from this screen displays information about battery charging. From here, you can select a preferred charging period to take advantage of cheaper electricity rates, or override the current settings by pressing Charge Now. It is also possible to specify a charging period by entering the planned departure time of the vehicle. Select Vehicle Departures from the app screen and follow instructions to set up either a one-off or a regular departure event. This will ensure that the battery will be charged, the cabin will be preheated and the windows fully defrosted at departure time. Preconditioning can also be triggered from the remote app. To get the best efficiency from your PHEV, it is important to keep the battery charged. Open the charging port by pressing the middle of the flap when the vehicle is unlocked. To charge with AC power, which is what your home can supply, connect the cable to the electricity supply first, and then plug the other end into the charging port on the car. Once connected, the cable is locked into position. The LED indicator will flash white whilst making a connection, and then flash green once charging begins. When the LED shows a constant green light, the battery is fully charged. A blue light indicates that a timed charging program is set, and a flashing red light indicates a problem with charging. Unplug the cable and try again. If the problem persists, contact your retailer. For faster charging away from home, Range Rover can utilize a 50 kilowatt DC charger. DC charging cables have a bigger plug, so you will need to remove the cover from beneath the charging port. Follow the instructions on the charging points for connection and payment information. To disconnect the charging cable, simply unlock the car and wait a couple of seconds for the cable lock to disengage. When DC charging, you will need to press the unlock button on the smart key twice. Again, the LED will indicate when the cable is unlocked. You can then safely unplug the cable, replace the charging port cover if necessary, and close the charging flap. Finally, when refueling your PHEV, you will need to unlock the fuel filler cap by pressing the button marked with a petrol pump icon located by the driver's knee next to the power tailgate control. A message on the information panel will confirm it is unlocked. This video has really only touched on the essentials. Please make use of the iGuide app or videos on our YouTube channel to find out more. Or contact your retailer with any questions. Thank you for your time. I hope you found this film useful and enjoy driving the new Range Rover.